This video is part of Vecotips 3D teaching course. In this video, I am going to speak about the perfect method for doing FACO aspiration. Now, this is a excellent technique for softer grade of cataract, particularly grade 1 or less. But you need to have a very predictable method doing that because when I used it in multiple cases previously, I found that somehow it was not happening in all cases very successfully. I was missing how to do hydro dissection and even I, if I could uh, prolapse the one pole of the nucleus out, many times I used to face difficulty in aspirating out this nucleus and one of the nightmares is having a punch hole like this and uh, having a PC tear where in the case of soft cataract you want to do something to keep it safer for the patient and you land up with more complication. Also the way it in which the nucleus used to prolapse was not something predictable. So it used to prolapse on one side or the other and uh, if it uh, prolapses in the subincial area like this, sometimes the method becomes little unpredictable because uh, uh, you don't have full control over the nucleus movement over there. But of course, this is a very useful technique. So I decided that I will study the cases where it was successful for me and try to find what I did right in those cases. So the purpose of this video is to tell you how to make this technique more predictable. What are the ways or tricks which can make this technique very predictable and you can use it in every soft grade of cataract. So I think the first thing which I realize is that the place of hydro dissection. So once we have achieved nice cortex cleaving hydro dissection, what I have to do is, you know, push more fluid on the right side corner, this one. And that's the area. If I inject more fluid in that area, I get a nucleus prolapse right in front of the incision and which is the easiest to tackle when we are do doing FACO aspiration part. So just watch, this is the right place where you have to inject the fluid. Of course, you can do a hydro dissection all around, make the nucleus free of the back. But this is the place where if you inject more fluid, you will have a nucleus prolapse, which is right in front, that is in ahead of the FACO tip. Second is the method of initial FACO. Now I used to try to start aspirating in one go. But here what I'm doing differently is that I'm keeping my second instrument behind the nucleus. So just watch it again when I show it in slow motion. When I keep it behind the pole which has prolapsed out, it acts as a barrier between the posterior capsule and my FACO tip. And the idea here is that I emulsify all the nucleus part which is between this Sinsky instrument and the FACO tip. So it is like shaving off the peripheral part of the nucleus. So just watch it again carefully. This is very important. You can also use a iris repositor or lens spatula just behind this uh, nucleus at the edge and then emulsify the nucleus part which is in between these two instruments that is the FACO tip and the second instrument. And second instrument has to be blunt so that you can go behind the prolapse part easily. So once you remove this peripheral rim of the nucleus, what we are basically doing by, you know, removing this peripheral part of the nucleus is that we are reducing the size of the nucleus. So once you have redu reduced diameter of the nucleus, what you have is a bigger bag and a smaller nucleus piece. So you can then rotate this piece easily and you can do the aspiration much, much easily. And that's the trick behind uh, doing a quick FACO aspiration that is the trim out the peripheral part of the nucleus which is between your second instrument and the FACO tip. So that also makes it safer and you avoid any punching holes in the periphery. So just watch it again. This is the right place where I do the last part of hydro dissection. Once nucleus pole is out, I'll be using the second instrument behind this prolapse pole and always use high flow rate and high vacuum because in this case it is important that you have good followability all throughout 
because once you trim out this peripheral nucleus you can see the nucleus size has shrunken and now if you have good flow rate and high vacuum of course it has to be permissible by your machine so set highest flow rate and vacuum which is uh, with stable chamber which the machine allows now two things absolutely we have to avoid is small ccc if you have small ccc it is very difficult to do hydro prolapse and also you risk having a hydro rupture of the posterior capsule like in this case so if you have small ccc better you enlarge it before planning this technique in your case or you just go ahead and do a prob probably a trench divide or chop technique whichever is your uh, technique of choice in that case second thing you have to avoid if it is a harder grade of cataract grade 2 plus you might be able to sometimes you know prolapse this nucleus out but i would advise you to do a phaco chop rather than doing just phaco aspiration because you might end up using high energy also much more anterior so like in this case i misjudged the grade of the cataract and it was slightly harder than grade 2 so i decided that i will do a chop and once you have two heminuclei you can then do the phaco aspiration part so these are the two things you have to be careful about so if you have grade 0 grade 1 cataract i think this technique works beautifully if you use the three things which i have mentioned in the video large size rexis the place of hydro dissection use of the second instrument and then doing high this video is high part vacuum of tips and 3D teaching course